Oh boy, it's streaming time. Oh, oh my god. Talk about the eclipse, huh? Oh, you want me to talk about the eclipse? Yeah, the eclipse. Uh, that just happened. I'm gonna turn my mic really fast. Eclipse was neat. Uh, I mean, I went upset. I went outside with some eclipse glasses, and I observed that uh, that was that was it. My friend looked, looked said it looked like a giant banana, which I think is an interesting take. Um, yeah, we're gonna start now. Operator cycle nineteen. That's us. I hope you're all doing well today. And uh, let's get back into some citizen sleeper, shall we? Whenever it loads. There we go. Oh, I gotta talk to Hard and Gross. Oh, I was playing with the controller last time. I was not playing with WASD. That's what's different. Now I understand why that feels wrong. I sat down and put the controller in my hand. And for what? Oh, yeah, that's better. Done all my tasks. I have one upgrade. Energy recovery at home. That's a dice action. I don't care about that. Plus one is nice. Okay, we're going to work towards the plus one, and then we'll start getting these upgrades. Let's see. I did Ethan's that last time. These are doing their things. What quests do I have? Repair, which takes die. Thing traces leads. Um, the ship mine, which I need to finish. I need to finish the other stuff. The quest. Which quest did I just have active? Hold on. Um, let's toggle tracking for the unit. Let's go talk to Harden really fast. It's been more than a few cycles since Fang confronted Hardin, and the silence since has been noticeable. Your time with Fang, you haven't exactly found him to be reliable. What you did expect to hear whatever what it, the end of whatever plan he put into action. Ugh, English is hard. Hardin, aha, I get it. That was that was a bad joke. I'm sorry. I'm also gonna tune this down just a little bit. 11. But if he won't come to you, you think as you approach the Haven Age building, then it's time to come to him. He, after all, he did promise to fix your tracker, and you are getting nervous. As you approach the bay doors, you see them wide open, and light pouring out of the once dark room. Stacks of servers and terminals sit outside the bay, suddenly robbed of their mystery by the bright flood lamps. A figure in Haven Age security fatigues steps out of the bay as you get closer, steering a Carrying a stack of hardware. Let's approach. As you get closer, you see the security officer taping up machines from Fang Stash with what looks like hazard tape. Oh boy. This isn't good. You again. I don't remember how to do the voices. This is going to be a mess. You again. Harden is there, leaning beside the bay entrance so calmly that you barely noticed him. He has a slate in his hand, an inventory of seizures scrolled across it. Predictable. Further evidence of Fang's collusions. You see another security officer come out of the bay and take notice of you. Harden. Harden pushes away from the wall and comes closer. Don't worry, sleeper. We have all the evidence we need. A confession won't be necessary. He gestures around the stacks of hardware. Spying on fellow Haven Age members, hoarding soul high materials, and obsession with corporate data. It speaks for itself, does it not? That was his job. And what would you know about jobs, sleeper? 
He looks up at the glass roof above and the stars beyond. We are the ones that provide the oxygen you are breathing, the light you are seeing, the systems you use every day to live out your cycles. This place was hard fought for, Sleeper. It took work, diplomacy, and strength to stop the eye from descending into chaos after Solheim collapsed. Not blind conviction or self-interest. Fang isn't shellfish. Shellfish? He's not a shellfish. Fang isn't a muscle. I know all about the back room of our mutual friend, Sleeper. Don't you worry about that. His parent would be sickened by the damage he's trying to do to the institution they helped found. You see, Sleeper, we are proud of our history here. Andre Erlen and the, the first union founded this place, and Haven Age has welded his values into the station's very walls. We will never turn away the hard-working, the just, the true citizens of the Eye. Haven Age aren't a gang like a Yadigan. We aren't pirates like the half like half the spacers you'll meet in the hub, or esoterics like those Hypha radicals in the Greenway. We're the backbone of this place, proud and true. We named Erlen's Eye Sleeper. This is our station. He meets your eye. So please, take your false accusations elsewhere before I decide to need your confession after all. History will catch up with you. I'm afraid, not afraid of history, sleeper. We're making it here, cycle by cycle. He smiles. If you have any pride, you'll give up Fang the moment he contacts you. You'll know where to find me. With that, Harden turns his back and walks back towards the security officers, ordering them to continue to clear out. As they do, something catches your eyes um, um, I, bleh, among one of the server stacks. A crumpled, hand-printed box of synthetic chewing gum. A penguin character grinning brightly, car color brightly colored card. And scrawled onto it, a speech bubble reading, Take me to Tambor. You carefully pocket the box, making sure no one is watching, and then turn away, just as another stack of servers is wheeled out of the bay. What have you done, Fang? And where the hell is Tambor? Is that the penguin on the box? Fang's gun box, that's cute. There's my ship mind. I need to figure out what other objectives I have. Yard hand, so I need to keep working to get the yard hand thing done. Empty containers home. Um, they're just coming back, there's nothing to do about that. So what about the bar? Overlook regular. Um, let's buy rations. Nice, energy plus plus. But I have to drink for me to be regular. Plus energy, overlook regular, minus six cryo. So I can finish it all now. I mean, this is kind of a waste, but... Glass shatters on the steel bar behind you, and the taunts don't take long to follow. Hey, haunt! The spacer calls across the low room. What are you doing here? He laughs at his own lame joke. Plain human. Ignore him. You hunch a little further, staring at the hundreds of tiny impact points that the scar, that scar the bar's surface. Hand falls on your shoulder, but you flinch away. It as you flinch away, it pats reassuringly. You freeze in place. Out. The voice from behind you. Come, the voice comes from behind you, sped out like a shot. You see bright. You turn to see bright eyes, dark hair, a stare that could breach the wall and vent you into a hard vacuum. You turn back to the spacer. The second glass comes sailing through the air. Gaming respectfully. We are gaming respectfully. I only game respectfully. I'm gonna catch that glass. You reach up a hand, and the glass shatters across your forearm, showering you in fragments. Ow. Through the haze of glass and Jirel, Jirel vapor, you see Tala leap the bar and close the distance to the spacer. The thud as he slams into the wall echoes across, around the bar like thunder. Now flanked by other figures, quick to their feet, Tala throws the spacer out through the door and stands silhouetted against the rotunda lights. You touch your arm and it feels wet. Someone helps you to your feet and back onto your stool. Broken glass rattles as it is cleared, and a fresh measure of Jurel is glugged out in front of you. That same hand, warm, heavy, falls on your shoulder once more. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of shit here. Tala flops onto the stool beside you. Let's get a look at you. 
Hella wipes the powdered glass from around the wound, and someone places a bottle of alcohol and a metal tin with tweezers on the bar. She disinfects them, and then turns to you. That was an ambitious catch. She smiles, pulling a sliver of glass from your forearm. Stupid, but ambitious. You don't feel the pain. Only the string of status messages your body delivers concerning dermal damage and the exposed structures. You do feel care, though. As Tala's bright eyes search your thick synthetic skin for splinters. Watch her. Tala works with the, with the skill of someone who has had to pick glass splinters from the skin of a stranger's before. What a sentence. She hones in on each bright shard, all the time tapping with tweezer tips in little rhythms that only she can follow. Tala smiles to herself. So, you've been on the eye long? Just arrived. I thought so. I've only seen you a couple times. A splinter clinks into the tin. Not everyone is like that, idiot. We don't all hate you. She glances around. Some of the regulars, maybe they fear you. Maybe they're just curious. I don't know. But I do know that the Overlook is a safe place. I know what it's like to be new in this place. Trust me. She meets your eye. I'm not trying to convince you of anything or separate you from your chits. I just want you to know that if you need somewhere, you can always come here. I know the rations we've got aren't much. The company is, she leans in, limited. But if you need work, I'll happily put you behind the bar. And if you need shelter, well, we can discuss that. You'll be safe. Usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in Greenway this cycle, haggling with our supplier. Francis tends to be particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. She places her tweezers in the tan with a clink. That's you, sleeper. Here. She slides the glass of Jorel to you. This'll help. She stops her hand still on the glass. Wait, does this help? I mean, can you get... drunk? No idea. She laughs. Well, keep trying. I'll let you know if I see any difference. She walks back around the bar, gathering the glasses as she does. Before long is retelling how she threw that space route to a new group that just wanted in, complete with traumatic actions. She gestures in your direction, and you instinctively look away, back to the one surface of the bar. Take a sip of the Jarell. The earthy fungal tones fill your senses, almost blocking out sight and sound, like diving headfirst into a bog. You may not be able to get drunk, but this is a connection to something grown, something fermented, something old. Feels good. Gaming, respectfully. Um, can't do anything at the Compressor Club. I can always go buy more stuff in the... Da, 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 da. Okay. Nope, that's not bad. Go to Eep. Irk Sunbathe. Okay, that's what I just unlocked. I don't need that. End cycle, drink water. And I need to buy drugs. Or no, I have drugs. Drugs. Uh, for those of you who are joining me for the first time for the Citizen Stream Sleeper, sleep, citizen, citizen Sleeper Stream, oh my goodness, English is difficult. Anyways, um, this is a tabletop RPG as a video game in space is one of the best ways I can describe it. Um, it's really cool, and we are... How do I... How do I define this? Yippee! True. We are the consciousness of another person implanted into a cybernetic body. That's how I would try to define it. Uh, let me not do that. There we go. 100% positive. Boom. Look at that. Upgrade point. You get upgrade points as you do these quests here on the left. Um, you can use them to upgrade on the right. And let's get that last plus one. Um, you roll all your dice per cycle. I want to get Obsessive Haggler first, I think, which gives me discounts on stuff. Castor's Table. I can't give him any more data yet oh is this tambor 
Timber Tea House. Okay, this is where I'm supposed to take the cigarettes. We'll get to that in a moment. I need to gamble. Money. Gaming, respectfully. Um, and then... I can hack these Haven Age agents. Haven Age agents? Oh, wow. English is hard. Uh, no. I need a two or a three pip. Means I can only hack the yet again agents. There's only one of them around, so it ain't worth it. The free spoke. I can climb this, right? Scale the spoke. Spoke climber. Enter the spoke. This is not good for me in any respect. What can I do here? Is this just end cycle? Get a stray. Feed a cat. Feed the cat. We love gambling. We do love gambling. Stray fed. Um, and then let's. Oh, cat. Let's go. The stray hops up onto a work surface and looks out of the unit's small window. It doesn't acknowledge your presence. It just sits there beside the tray of crumbled crackers, staring out at the low end. What is this cat's story? Are there more on the station? You haven't seen another in the low end, but in this ma vast megastructure, that means very little. There could be a whole colony of cats like this one down in the Warrens. You look at its sleek, dark fur and sharp eyes. It doesn't look ragged. It looks at home. In fact, its presence in the unit makes you wonder if this is the Stray's apartment which you are squatting in. Oops. You lean a little forward, and the Stray tenses up. Perhaps best to give it a moment to get used to you. The stray settles a little and starts eating, picking at the broken crackers. I remember ever having been this close to an animal. It triggers something in you. A recognition of life, totally unlike your own. It's somehow still connected, parallel, even interwoven. The stray licks crumbs from its fur. You like it here? The stray flicks at their tail at the sound of your voice. It is hard to imagine a stray liking anything or at least being vulnerable enough to admit it. The stray's pleasure at existing here, in this place, shines through every, its every sinew. It's not that the stray is always happy on the eye, but that the stray is engaged by this place. It is alive here. You turn your eyes to the window, the one that the stray looks out of, and you both watch the stars and the ships together. You feel something pass between you and the stray. A kind of acknowledgement of each other. A sense that each of you might share something with the other. A point of connection. Then, all at once, the stray yawns wide, hops down from the unit and brushes it alongside your leg. And then it is gone, out through the unit door and back into the corridors of the low end. Goodbye, kitty. I will see you again later. Let's go do this thing. Sunbathe. Gaming. Respectfully. Let's do it again. That's awesome. Another tea house. Let's give them my gum box. A waitress looks at you with suspicion as you hand over the box. Is this the right place? As you go to leave the Tambor tea house, a hand falls on your shoulder. Sleeper. Bang hisses from behind you. How did you find me? The penguin. Penguin, what do you... He thinks for a moment. Oh, do you mean he mimes throwing gum into his mouth? It wasn't meant for you specifically, but he cringes. Look, it doesn't matter. Come, let's sit. Then guides you down a set of stairs to one of the tambor's lower levels. The tea house is stacked with curved mezzanines. Oh, I fucking hate mezzanine levels. I want to talk to the architects who decided to do that. All connected by a central atrium. The levels are filled with makeshift booths and bars, and conversation bounces busily off the metal walls. Thing sees you looking around. This place used to be a fuel tanker's main drum, hence the name. The tea house part is a bit of a misnomer, though. You get anything the eye offers from this place, but real tea isn't exactly readily available. He picks a booth, itself fashioned from some old salvaged tank or container, lined with spongy insulation foam, and collapses into it. He looks around furtively. I don't suppose you've seen any Haven Age types. They don't usually come out this far. Only you. 
Not anymore, I'm afraid. It's been without appeal. Turns out Harden has someone's ear. He grins. Doesn't bother me though, it shows we had a nerve back there. Takes a scrappy hand scrawled menu from the table and tosses it over. What are you drinking? What's the plan? Plan, plan, plan. He waves his hand. Let's order first. Thing is right, the menu is ridiculous. There's at least ten different infusion, most of which you can't make out. Paper is dominated by an extensive complement of esoteric alcohols and cocktails. Black tea is listed without a price as a spe seasonal specialty. So you ran into Harden. Was he pissed? Thang doesn't wait for an answer. That snake is so self-righteous, he might actually believe that early when approve of his meritocratic bullshit. He taps on the table. If Haven Age was like it should be, like it was founded to be, I would have shouted at him down at any council meeting he dared mention true citizens. He sighs. I guess his kind run the place now. A young woman with a vine tattoo snaking up her arm turns up at the booth, a slate in hand. Your order? You skim the menu, your eyes glazing over. Time to pick something. A Jarell, neat. Bang taps the table to order the same. And you... She begins, looking at Fang, but when she sees him, she suddenly stops. What the- Fang shrinks a little. You're supposed to be working. This is your shift. He grins sheepishly. Stay out of it. Look, Jenna, let's just say this is my break. My friend has been here has been through a lot. Jenna looks between the two of you. Wave. Fang doesn't look pleased. Two minutes. Jenna says, pointing at Fang. No, only because I don't want to get dragged into whatever this is. She rushes the table and walks off. What? Fang stretches out in the booth. You know how it is, we all have to eat. Plus, he leans in. This is the best place around here to find a person you might be looking for. Who? Remember that web of connections Harden pinged the moment we confronted him? Those are his collaborators. If we want to understand what a Solheim executive might be getting up to in the eye, those are the people we have to find. Thing is almost whispering now. There's a couple of them I suspect are in the low end, and well. Almost everyone in the low end comes to this place at one or time or another. It brings a modified slate down to the table. Set this up so when anyone comes with the, with the network signature I'm looking for, comes in close proximity, it'll mark them. Once they're marked, we can break through their access protocols and get that good stuff inside. You have to find them first. Hence me moonlighting as a waiter. A sudden smile grows across his face. Wait, I have an idea. Look, I can't cover enough of the low end on my own. So far I've had no matches in this place. With two of us, we can cover more ground. Are you going to tell me to work at the bar I just got offered a job at? Oh. Well... Fang has a little hangdog- Fang has a little hangdog look. Let me get you out and about in the low end. In close proximity to as many people and residences as possible. It turns out my friend Mingi needs some help with deliveries, as in Mingi Express. So you're hoping know him. Perfect. Fang places a tiny receiver on the table. This connects to my slate. It runs the same marking protocol if you get any or any other targets. So all you have to do is take some delivery ships for old Mingi, and soon enough we'll have the whole place covered. Fang. Don't give me that. You think I like working here? And you thought I, you, I thought you could use the tips. He grins. We're in this together, right? Right. Okay then. Fang slips his slate back under his clothes. Head on up to Mingi Express, take a delivery shift, and we'll see what shakes up. And to find anyone and extract any data, bring it right down to me. You should have me on double shifts, so I shouldn't be hard to find. Then I walks past, carrying a tray of drinks and sharply catching Fang's eye. I don't think she's bringing your drink. He stands. I think it's time we call this meeting to a close. We grab this receiver from the table and slip it into a pocket. See you soon, sleeper. Stay safe. Fang adds before turning and walking off towards the bar, whistling as he does. This man. This fella. End cycle. All right, energy down. Let's start by gambling. I love gambling. Just nine? Ah, uh, whatever. 
Gambling. Negative 13, what the hell? Okay, so anyways. Um, let's go to Mini Express. New manufacturer. Express delivery. Don't hurt me. Of course it was a bit negative. Why wouldn't it be negative? Alright, let's end the cycle. Ah. Uh, I need to go buy food. I mean, actually, I could just recover with the uh, chip. I find it surprising that the negative still gives me plus one. Alright, let's go deliver. Thirteen cryo, thanks targets. Thirteen cryo, thanks targets. And let's toss another one of these in here. Perfect. Sleeper. You see Fang coming up the corridor as you step out of Mingy's. The kelp noodle smell still clinging to your clothes. Yep, that's that's how it feels working in food service. He comes up, he comes up fast and stops close, looking around suspiciously. I don't have long. Take these. Ping palms you a couple of those metal thumbnail-sized drives. Ripper worms. My slate is buzzing, buzzing like crazy. It seems your delivery shifts have turned up two of our targets. Squeezes your shoulder. I knew you could do it. Now we nail those snakes. I'm ready. Harden's boys are all connected by some kind of closed network. You break the access protocols on them, you should be able to gain the location of the nearest network ports. Slot the ripper worms in those ports. One each. They'll feed me anything and everything. Start on hard and shadow network. He smiles. Can't wait to see what juicy plans they have in there. Gaming respectfully. Near the scuff of boots as the group comes up the corridor, likely on their way to place an order with Mingi. You turn for a second. When you look back, Meng is already halfway in the direction down the corridor in the opposite direction. Wow. Already halfway down the corridor in the opposite direction. He raises a hand and farewell is gone. You run a finger over the tiny ripper worm drives in your pocket. Smile to yourself as you wonder how mad Jenna will be at Fang for this little excursion. Time to slot some worms. I love slotting worms. Get slotted. Where? Oh, it's just called Hardened Agent. Aha! Uh -huh. The reason fives. You remember the guy who lived here? He didn't tip. Time for him to see the consequences. That's really fucking funny. I love flavor text. And a ripper worm. Haven Age slotted, port closed. And then where's the other Haven Age? Where's the other hardened agent? Haven Age, Haven Age. I can't do it today, anyways, but. Okay, he's right there. And. I want to. Pay for a pass for the greenway. There we go. You step out into the passage, someone barrels into you from behind, sending you stumbling down the corridor. You see an unfamiliar spacer, laden with heavy gear. She steadies herself, staring you down as if daring you to respond. Sorry. She adjusts a strap on her shoulder, holding up a hand in recognition before setting off down the corridor. I'm sorry for her. Second spacer smiles at you apologetically. She's on a mission, and when she's on a mission, they shrug. Not a problem. They smile. You're sweet. Peek. Isha? Isha? Ish? Eshi? Stands further down the corridor, glowering at her friend. She chops at the air, pointing down the corridor to whatever end she is rushing to. Peek raises their eyebrows at you. Ash, please, do you want everyone on the station to hate us? Ash hardens. They want to hate us. They can hate us. They want to hate us. They can hate us. There, there's English. Drops her hip. Not exactly seeing much love as it is. We're lucky we got to. We're lucky we got through before they sent up that damn Gordon. Gordon? 
He gestures in your direction. See, they don't even know what you're talking about. The station isn't Hawthorne. Not everyone has to follow some corporate protocol. Esh. Isha. Isha. Isha sighs. I'm not saying they're part of the administration. She jerks her head in your direction. But I am saying we need to get the supplies to the briar before someone asks, starts asking questions. Can I help? He smiles, smiles slightly. See, Isha? Help. Isn't that exactly what we need right now? Peek. Isha rolls her eyes. Peek ignores her. We're the refugees. The one Haven Age has cordoned off from entering the station. Isha interrupts. The one that are being quarantined in makeshift vessels that barely made it to the eye to begin with. The one your station administrators have called an existential risk and are running out of supplies while their right to safety is being debated by people with no stake in their future. She quickly looks away, annoyed at her own outburst. Peek sighs. She's right. People are trapped out there and they turn to Isha. We understand that this is a big problem for the Eye. Hundreds of refugees and more ships turning up each cycle. They hold up to stop Isha interrupting, but Isha turns away, her burning angle a palpable her burping burning anger a palpable force in the close quarters of the corridor. They need supplies, and after everything they've been through, the quarantine isn't helping. Peak finishes. That's terrible. Isha turn looks back at you, her fierceness fading. Peak, please. Isha gathers herself and the supplies. Isha, we need help. Just like the refugees needed us, we need others too. I smile at her. Peak turns to you. I'm Finus. The climbing briar is docked at the broke spoke. Broken spoke, past the green way and in the wastes. We have a good view of the cordon, though we are keeping our distance for now. Come help us. I squeeze your hand. Isha turns to leave and Peak follows, waving goodbye. A moment later, Isha shouts back down the corridor. Don't bother coming up to handed. You want to help? Show us. Bring supplies or you don't come at all. With that, they disappear down the corridor. Isha already picking up speed as Peak calls for her to slow down. A refugee flotilla? Flotilla? Flotilla. Where are they coming from and why now? Each time you think you begin to understand this place, something changes. This place is fucking huge. Holy shit. I didn't realize how goddamn big this place was. There's the wastes. Commune. Greenway. I need to pick mushrooms here. Alright. Walk the greenway. I mean, I don't have any die to work with right now. I have to cross every single time. Oh, it's probably for the sake of loading. It probably makes it easier to load the game. That makes sense. I I retract that statement of surprise. Okay. Feed the cat. Go to sleep. Or not, the cat's coming back. Or maybe not. Go to sleep. Ooh, those are some good die. Let me think. Let me go check again how many more cycles. Three cycles. Let's toss this in here really fast. Nine cryo, really. Just nine. Whatever. Harden agent. Take the three. Oh no, you need a six and a four. That's fine. <sighs> I should have checked that. Alright, Fang's gonna get his data. Good for him. Yeah, he's ready. Let me go buy food from Emphis really fast. And you go get your roll caps. Which I think can only be gotten from Greenway specifically. Let's map the pathways. Find green. 
Bus going green. Don't hurt me. Gaming respectfully. Cool. Let's cross back. Fang. As you walk into the town where you quickly spot Fang arguing with Jenna. Keep your distance. It doesn't look good. Fang seems to be explaining something, but Jenna is having none of it. She points to the door and Fang walks away, catching your eye as he turns. They're done with you getting back here a minute ago. He glances at Jenna. Well, either way, it looks like I'm fired. Good news is that it doesn't look like I need the job anyway. Takes his slate out. Ugh. He takes out his slate, pulsing with pale light. Let's take a look at what you really are here for. Slate is a whirring mess of code streams coming direct from the Ripper Worms as they dig through the agent's data and spin it into threads for the slate to pick up. Anything good? Thing scrolls the display with a finger. A lot of junk, a lot of dollars, hell mess threads, a lot of tedious data caches, but. Thing's eyes flash. Definitely some good stuff. He stops the screen scrolling on an entry and expands it. Check this out. Thing shows you the screen. You see a bold corporate logo, not Solheim's, and a word below. Conway, Feng says. He's working with the Conway. On my extractions, right? Feng nods. He's been speaking with them, personally. Got a whole chain of messages here, but it's mostly encrypted or redacted. He rubbed his head. Damn it. This is juicy, but we can't nail him with it. He scrolls some more. Wait, 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 wait. What's this? Wasteland Reclamation Facility. Right here on the eye. He glances at you. What's the bet this place is tucked into the wastes? Conway are set up here? I'm guessing so, got themselves set up in the wastes. Like before the collapse, people would have got there by going down the connected spoke from the hub. That spoke's broken now. It's the only way is the long way. Around the rim, past the greenway, he shows you on the slate. Bang looks away, thinking. Conway have been making moves on the system since the collapse. But they took over one of Solheim's old belt colonies a long while, time ago. Moved everyone out and reclaimed the whole rock. I work with Harden. Access? Old connections? Not sure. Then he looks back at the screen. If Harden's involved, we need to check it out. Simple as that. Thing stares out into the middle distance. We have to get to the facility. The answer to whatever Harden has been prepping. And planning has to be there. We are going to catch him in the act. Give me five, maybe six cycles, and we'll see you on the greenway. I seem to remember there's some old service docks on the outer shell by the, by the Haifa building. Should be a good place to meet. Fing squeezes your shoulder. Thanks again, Sleeper, for sticking with us. I haven't forgotten about that tracker of yours either, but I'm going to need to be back in my bay to pull a solution together. He turns the slate to face you, showing mass scrolling code. I'm working on a fix on my brakes, he winks. Fing grins. See you soon, Sleeper. He walks out the door of the tambo without looking back. I have one upgrade point, nothing I can use it on. Crack Conway. Oh boy. We got our work cut out for ourselves, huh? That cycle. Water. Flickering again? Jesus Christ. Well, that's not good. How much is it? 80 credo? Oh, this is not how I'd like to be spending my day. We need to play Talva, or we're screwed. Negative outcome. Great. This is not good at all. Um, safe. Okay, well, at least I get some energy out of this. Ah, oh, shit. End cycle. Oh, I'm in trouble, trouble, because Ethan's going to come back. I don't have to pay his debt anymore. Never mind, I'm fine. <laughs> I still do need to worry about my condition. Okay, now we can buy stuff. 
Don't lose me money. I'll cry. Ah, uh, that's fine. Neutral. And buy a suppressor or supplement. Buy these. Can I input the supplement through here? The stabilizer? Same things, right? Answer is yes. Okay, what I need to be doing is a couple of things. I need to finish hacking Haven Age agents. Let's use some of these. We gotta get Cry out of it, which is nice. I need to hack five. I can keep working with the cast or. I'll get there eventually. Nothing else down here for now, which means we can exit this mode. Ethan comes back in one cycle, that's bad for me. Nope, don't do that. Let's make some money. Okay, we've got 58 cryo. Oh, hello. I can work the stacks and steal a harvest. We caught stealing, so don't steal. That's where Fang's doing his thing. Um, good way. Come on, positive. Damn it. Give me the positive outcome, please. Yes. There we go. The aviary. Mushroom groves. Perfect. This is what I need. Danger. Of course. Not grove sport. I don't know what grove sports are for. Grow mushrooms. They have the aviary. What's in the aviary? Hold on. Oh my god! Okay, well, that's gonna take a while. The fact that it gives an upgrade point is pretty good. So we'll work on that, I suppose. Um, let's go buy some more fungus from Emphis. <sighs> Don't do that. Go to bed. You miss me? Ethan smiles a ragged smile at you. No. I miss the no. Ethan follows along and you notice he's limping. Come on, sleeper, just a little joke. I know you have a sense of humor. You look at him. He's paler than usual, hunched. Putting a black guy in one of those few cycles of beard growth. No way to greet an old friend. Friend? Get lost. Ethan's face drops, along with all pretense of friendliness. I think you'll want to hear this, sleeper, I think. He says rapidly, shaking his head. You'll really want to hear this. Hear what? Ethan perks up. This is big, really big stuff about you. He seems more jittery, on edge. Right, SNR, cancel that contract at you. Not sure I was going to collect. I'm guessing you were pretty happy about that shit. Overjoyed. Me? I lost everything, but I'm not worried about that. He smiled sarcastically. And so what did you think? That was it? I was just glad to be done with you. The feeling was mutual. Except, Ethan with a dramatic pause. What if old Essen up gave the bounty to someone else? Someone else is even more of a shithead than yours truly. I mean, yeah, I figured as much. He smiles darkly. What a disaster that would be. Who? Ethan grins. That's the question, isn't it? Ethan fishes around in his pocket for a slip of paper. And speaking to some friends, you see, some colleagues about what went down. Turns out SNRP canceled all their bounty contracts, the whole lot. Seems they've brought someone in house, 
Someone who did so well in the last contract, they got offered a job. He leans in. Apparently he made a head on his ship called Winter Wonderland or something. Are you talking about my ship? He blew up my fucking ship, and I'm the last survivor, you asshole. The smuggling sleepers out from under Aston Carp's big corporate nose. Killed the crew and blew the ship, Ethan whistles. I call them Hemwick or Maywick or something. I forget. Me Winterlight? That's it. Looks at you hard, so you do know all about this. Pats you on the shoulder. They'll be very happy to hear what I'm about to offer you. Ethan runs his hand through his greasy hair. Given this new information I've brought to light, it seems like you're in need of protection. Wait for the pitch. I, meanwhile, am in need of some assistance in kind. Turns out I upset some people at the compressor last time you were there. The owners. Said they'll space me unless I work off the debt. Seems they're that kind of businessmen. He grimaces. I'd pay him, but... He shrugs, his pockets empty, inside out in a mime of poverty. Looks pitiful, even more so for his clownish acting. Then work it off. You should be glad, the anger rising in him now. I came here and told you this. Think anyone's looking out for you? You are a contract. A name on a wall. He kicks the wall. Ethan wraps his temples. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for being this shit. I'm trying to kill you and whacking that thick skull of yours, he sighs. Think I want to go up against the guy? But us. He jabs a finger between the two of you. We don't have a choice. Do so you keep me from getting killed and I'll do the same for you? We can help each other. A straight 50-50 deal. He looks at you. I'm not asking for a favor. I'll think about it. Ethan nods. I'm at the compressor. Every cycle. Working. Just... He pauses. Think about Maywick. Think about that cold-eyed SNR shit on his way here from the core systems. He smiles. That should give you the motivation you need. Ethan swaggers off down the corridor, throwing his jacket over his shoulder. Can't wait to be working with you, he shouts. New drive. Ethan's protection. I don't want to get his protection. He's a shithead. Um, I do. Oop. I can't finish this game without the thing. Ding, 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 ding. Fang, fang. Hold on. Take me over there. Okay, two cycles. In the meantime, let's forge for some fungus. That. Do I have to grow them in the aviary? Are you kidding me? <sighs> yeah. All right. Oh, that gives me plus three. That's nice. All right, one more ship tomorrow. Close the gap. And cycle. Did that have a bounty hunter waiting thing? Uh, need to leave the station, get protection, or disable your tracker before they arrive. Well, if Ethan will be there every day, and we're not going to worry about it for now. Become a three. Negative outcome still gives me one. That's impressive. There we go. Aviary. Oh my god. I need spores now. No, you're supposed to give me drill caps. Okay, I'm not crazy. I need to hope you give me more drill caps. Or you could not. Oh my god. Okay, one more day. I would like to disable my tracker, please. I would like to not be tracked. 
And of course I'm flickering again. God. Damn it. Let's gamble. Wonderful. Plus 24. Another one, and then we get the caps, and then we finish that, and we can do this quest too. Go down and grab the stabilizer. Let's go input that before I forget. Input stabilizer. Condition stable. And now we go forward for fungus. Boom, all the drill caps we need. Let's go talk to Fang. You went to the service dock. Fang is already set up, crouched among stacks of equipment. He was leaning over a terminal bathed in a blue glow. Looks totally at home. Slaper, what do you think? Turns out not everyone in Haven Age is set up against me. A couple of my old systems pals managed to ship me some of my old gear. He gestures to the pile of blinking hardware. Nice kit. Fang does a mock bow. Any updates? Fang beckons you over. The set of scans on the wastes of a terminal. Heat maps of activity overlaid. A chunk of the derelict rim is blotted with bright red and orange marks. This look like a wasteland to you? Fang shakes his head. There's hundreds of Conway machines out there, all lined up in concealed hangars, a whole underground facility to support them. Arden's got a crew out there putting them together. Must have shipped them in piece by piece to the shipyard, ready for assembly. We're planning something. No one needs hundreds of heavy-duty reclamation drones to run this kind of operation. Maybe Harden mastered the whole thing in an effort to clean up the wastes. There's no way this about pulling scrap off the eye. Bang looks worried. Why is Conway in the mix? But no one in Haven Age knows another corporation is set up on the station. They aren't stupid either. These scans are the best info I can get. Waste are cut off from the eye's cloud and networks, and the green way is a total dark zone. No data can come in or out. I'm sure I. No use, you need to enter the cloud, and there's no cloud to speak of. He turns and winks. That's why I'm gonna pay him a visit. Too risky. You forget, Haven Age come in and out of there all the time. You should be able to get in. As long as no one I know sees me, he grimaces playfully. I need you on the outside to help disable the security systems and cut a pathway through. There's no cloud access, but if I can get inside, I can open up the nodes and there's networks and we can work in tandem. It's a massive facility buried deep down there. Miles of corridor and vents wrapped around, ventways wrapped around cargo bays and hangars, so it'll take more than a few cycles to work through it. As long as you can keep them off my back, I know we can rip out of what we need. Pulls a handful of reaper worms from his pocket and hands them to you. These are my last of my little helpers I managed to salvage, so make them count. Modify them slightly. This time they'll feed their beta threads back into the system that they're towing through, creating a nasty little feedback loop. Run it just like we did the agents. Act the nodes I pinged to ping to locate the ports for the security system, then slot the words in the system and let them go to town. Points to a fuzzy silhouette of a buried facility on the terminal. Here's the entryway. This is where you can get the first access and slot the first worm. That'll fry their perimeter systems and get me past the first cordon. I need from you to keep your eyes on the facility after you kick things off. Then we pop up a security system, server bank, you need to break in and slot a ripper and disable it as soon as possible. If I can't, and look gives you a hard look. You miss a system, you wait too long, they're gonna find me. Simple as that. Clamps you on the shoulder. I need you to focus on this one, so I'm gonna let you fire the starting gun. I won't go until you slot that first worm. You have a tracker or anything in the terminal here, so come back here if you want my attention. He pats the top of the screen affectionately. Got it. Don't worry, you can run rings around their protocols, I've seen it. Then gets up. It's all in place, you just need to make your own preparations and slot the worm. He stretches. Just don't wait too long, I'm getting bored of all this sneaking around. Once I'm inside, I'll get the proof we need to end the whole thing, no matter what. He crouches to check the terminal. You can't take longer than six cycles on this thing, remember that. He stands up. Oh, and one last thing. He lowers his voice. If I get caught, you can't reach me or we run out of time. There's one thing I need you to do. What? You take whatever I managed to pull at that point, all that data, and you slot that stuff straight into the relay I've set up here. He points to a pile of servers and terminals hooked into the dock with cables thick as your arm. Repurpose the dock's SOS broadcast system to beam out whatever you put into it. 
Anyone with a terminal, a Slater server on it, I will see it. That means Haven Age, yet again, the hub, everyone. No matter what, Harden isn't sneaking away this time, he grins. Got a bit more to do here, but the moment you slot that first worm, I'll make my move. He gives you a parting smile and turns back to the terminal. Nerms hit you as you make your way back out of the service dock. Time to prepare yourself. Oh my god. This is nerve wracking, because where's the first one? Conway access, there it is. I need a worm. Which means I need to do other things first. Because I have the worms. How did I get? Four. Here's my plan. Uh, take your mushrooms. All right. Three cycles. Six cycles. This has more than six cycles. Okay. We're going to get everything set up as best we possibly can for our skill stuff so we can do a reroll. I'm going to get the, uh, the die reroll just in case we need that to slot into certain things. Or I could just go now. No, I should get some money. I should also go get some more spores in a bit for the aviary so I can get some more stuff there. There we go. And you're going to give me maximum payouts. I can't buy from him while he's doing his thing. So we're going to wait until tomorrow. There we go. Aviary. I need to go to the mushroom groves first. Whiskey. Oh, and you're minus energy. Okay, we need to go buy food now. Uh, we should still buy food. I need one more spore for tomorrow. Let's go buy some rations. There we go. 15 cryo for work ain't too bad. I could gamble and make more. We do love gambling. Okay. Let's go back. Let's grab some spores. Don't hurt me. Great, that's all I needed. One more spore. Blooms to emerge, and that's a four cycle thing. That's fine. Um, what about over here? Part of food with the stations. Plus energy is pretty good. Oh, that's stealing the harvest. Oops. I don't want to do that. Let me go ahead and people. Greenway gates. Oh, this is what I need for... That's a whole different mission. Let's go hack Haven Age. Yet again, yet again. Haven Age? What? That is not what I selected. Hello? There we go, Haven Age. Two more. You got a gun or Haven Edge? There we go. Uh, I can't hack you though. Unfortunate. Um, let's go over to Minkies. There we go. Let's swipe cryo.
And then we'll not sell my Haven Age data. That's not what I want to do. We will get some more cryo. Last thing I need to do is start breaking down. Ship is here. Nickel over prices. Ship mine fragment discount. Eh. Okay. I want to avoid doing anything for Ethan if I can. He can fight me. Emphasis is propelling the Jorel caps. He's had to happily adapt this recipe, he says. This smell is already incredible. It emanates from a white, strange purplish white bulb you have never seen before, and he's slicing it finely. He brushes and slices the mushrooms, and then places them in the wok with the sliced ball and the oil. Is he talking about an onion? He caramelized there, in that well-worn crucible. He had liquids, transparent and opaque, and tightens on the heat. Final sprinkle of leaves is the finishing touch. Have a moment, sleeper. Do you have a story? Something in the scent of the food gives you a feeling of nostalgia, something distant and melancholy. It seems the story you should should match that feeling somehow, and maybe you'll be feel better telling it. Oldest memories. You start by explaining when you were emulated from a person, many of your memories are left behind. Perhaps it is an intentional part of the process, a way of keeping sleepers ignorant and malleable. Or perhaps it is a side effect of imperfect emulation. You admit that you don't really know. What you do know is some memories survive, and on the occasion that they come back to you, like shadows overhead. You detail one recurring memory, which despite you returning to you with enough regularity for you to think it is familiar, it always fades as quickly as it arrives. You struggle to explain the feeling of being whole for a moment that comes with this memory. And then how that wholeness slips away to leave you feeling like you've forgotten something important, but just can't bring it to mind. Emphis nods throughout, cooking as he does with deft and skillful movements. You start to trail off and you realize you can't find the words to explain how memories you do have feel both like yours and someone else's at the same time. But that always fills you with a certain sadness. Sadness of remaining forever and ever known. Sadness of remaining forever unknown, even to yourself. Emphis finishes cooking and meets your eye. I'm sorry, sleeper, for your troubles. He puts the walk to one side. I appreciate you sharing with me, he smiles. I hope it lightens you a little. He passes you a bowl and heaps the Jorels into it, the yellow color mixing with the pale sauce and whirls and blooms. Eat. The dish is delicious, filling. It warms you in a, as you eat in a way you weren't even sure your could body could be warmed. It is a small mercy, you think, that SNR left you this pleasure. Many of the features of the frames are there to simulate human experience. You know that much. Emulated minds cannot be rewired, so the need for embodied experience must be met. This is why you breathe when you do not eat air. Without that, the simulation of without that simulation, the sensation of drowning would be unbearable. Food serves another purpose. Your frame is able to metabolize it to produce energy from the raw material. Vitamins and minerals are excess, of course. Your frame only needs raw power. So much is wasted. Yet, while you eat this food and feel that warmth, nothing is wasted. It all means something to you. As you finish, Emphis takes the bowl, the last of his cleaning. He smiles at you, and neither of you feel the need to say anything more. Instead, you simply exchange nods and walk your separate ways back into the bright market, somehow changed. What? More mushrooms? Oh my god. Oh, uh, water. Okay, well I guess I have to wait for those to grow. Um, but what if I started this? Boop. You need to be given, ready to give it all your attention. Godspeed thing. As you slot the word, or a thread jumps out of the facility, and it spools in front of you, releasing its data like ink in the water. Sleeper, Fang's voice crackles through. 
Moving in. Nodes, then ports. Aware of interference. Slot the worms. Timer starts now. Stay safe. Red dissipates. You're on your own now. Hello? There we go. Of course, this is the one fucking... That's insane. Is he gonna die because I can't do anything about this? He has six cycles. That's so fucking stupid. So that means if you get bad RNG, you're just done. Let me get a stabilizer. Here's the plan. Um, let me think. Let me hack more Haven Age agents if they're around. Of course. Let's go get money then. Oh, it's because I didn't buy the friggin' stabilizer. Can I input it early? I can. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make sure we stay in shape and then we don't degrade at all during it. <sighs> input. Nine crow. Okay. Anything safe I can do? Risky. That's fine. I can deal with an energy cut if necessary. Yeah. That's fine. Oh my god. This is stressful. Thank God. Okay. Go back immediately. Let's go ahead. That's the wrong gate. There we go. Take this. Another one. First slave security. Feedback loop over loading the system doors. Oh god. An access point won't be enough to locate the port. Please don't be exactly the same. I did not say the greenway cipher. Holy shit. Where? Why? Where the hell is this? There we go. Next ripper worm. I have one more ripper worm. Need a six or five. Six or four. Can you not do this for like three seconds? Five or three. Great. Let's go back to the yard hand stuff. It's the negative is that it's just energy loss. I can handle that. Yeah. Whatever, I got a random scrap from that, that's fine. Go to bed. You're doing your thing over here. Let's go get more fungus really fast. Clock is ticking. 2625 is fine. 4 and 25 is fine. Two six and all ones. <laughs> well, 
That's something. I would appreciate it if you did not just give me negative the entire time. Thank you. Brand new people, Haven Age offices. Oh, and you'll pay me for yet again data. You'll pay me for a ship mine fragment. Oh, wow. That's really good. Uh, junior Tech Quality Control. Oracle Seed Drop from the roster. But don't do a bad. Gotcha. Um, can I hack even age? No. Hack yet again, though, can't I? No, nope, that's more Haven Age. Hack yet again, can't I? There we go. Okay. We'll buy more from Emphis in a bit. Definitely not our breaking. It would never be room. Okay. Three nodes to look at the final port. And it's this one over here that takes a six as well. That one takes a four or five, I think. Five or a three, okay. That's not bad at all. Probably. I hope. Do, 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 do. Let's go get more mushroom food stuff. 15 crayon. Okay, and then go to bed. Hunter's coming in fast. Wait, I've seen I forgot I have to go talk to people. Uh, it was Lem and Mina. From the walkway, the side real horizon looks impossibly vast. A landscape of plating and frames. All along her flanks, torches flicker. Jones maneuver, arc lights glint. The sense of scale of industry is both sunny and strangely unsettling. You're quite beautiful, I think. You turn to see a figure a little way down the hallway, leaning against the rail. He is thin and ragged, his work gear poorly fitting and loose. Torches of the side real horizon flicker in his eyes as he talks to you. Lem, he leans back from the rail, revealing a child standing beside him, staring at the ship. This is Mina, he adds with a smile. Hi, Mina. She stares and tucks herself behind Lem, who dutifully picks her up. She's a little slow to trust, aren't you, Mina? She bears her face in the folds of his overalls. Mina looks up from Lem's chest, a dark brown eye twinkling amongst the rough material. You working on her then? Lem asks eagerly, gesturing to the vast ship, or just admiring. He shifts Mina's weight to the other arm. Working. Me too, me too. He flashes the Haven Age pass. I just knew it to I knew it just to look at you. I mean he stumbles over a little over his words, not wanting to mis be misunderstood. And you look like a worker. She's mean of my tickets out of this place, her escape vector so to speak. Oh. Haven't you heard? Anyone who takes on a heavenly contract on the side rear will be entered into a draw from the transit support crew. He smiles. We won't get to sleep through the journey, but a couple of decades of service will mean nothing to me. If Mina and if mean Mina and Mina ugh, be nothing for me and Mina if it means landfall in a new world. He winks. Transit support? Uh huh. Something we need to stay awake during to keep everything running. He straightens up, strapped on her back. It's a colony ship, friend. The Cellus Foundation is sending thousands to settle a system out well outside the reach of the core worlds. Be a totally independent colony. A surrogacy, no corporations. Why is it here? Why well, build it here, you mean, he grins? Don't ask me, I know as much as Mina about that. It ruffles Mina's hair thoughtfully. I suppose many corporations weren't too happy about breaking up the idea of surrogacy, setting up somewhere without it feeding back to the core. Maybe Cellus got caught locked at the corporate short shipyards. Ooh, and had to go begging for someone to set up, homeless, just like Mina and me. Mina responds by pushing his hand away. Daddy, she whispers. Rude. On an exaggerated, grumpy face. She glances furtively at you as she plays with a set of dog tags that hang from Lem's neck. I'm just chatting, Meanie. Give me a, give me a second. Luke turns back to you and suddenly notice how tired he looks. I'm not on the Haven Age crew yet, but I'll work my way in. You can do it too, friend. We'll have to stick together. 
He smiles a little shakily. You wonder how long he's been working to break into the official shipyard crew. For sure. Looks out of the side wheel horizon as if trying to pull energy from those flickering torches from the vast hall. Got to hold out, okay? You aren't quite sure if he's talking to you. That's how it works. While he stares out, Mina catches your eye curiously. You agree, Mina? Brightens up and meets your eye. Daddy loves me. He says it stubbornly, daring you to question her. Lem smiles and lifts Mina. That's it. We hold on. He smiles sheepishly at you. We're just a couple of softies. Isn't that right, Mina? He sets her down, standing by his side, and she clings to his leg. Gotta feed this one. He pats her back. Maybe see you on a shift, huh? He turns and they walk down the walkway away from the shipyard. You see them talking, and a moment later, Mina stops and turns around. See you, robot! Her <laughs> shout echoes down the walkway, and she flashes you a parting smile before running to catch up with Lem. You watch them a little before you turn back to the impossible scale of the side reel of Horizon. I take it out. Interesting. Can I find them here? No. How do I buy them food? Please. <sighs> okay, still in stable condition. That's not a five or a three, you motherfucker. Okay, well that's not good. Is this done? Aviary stuff? Harvest mushrooms. Did I get points from the aviary stuff? Give me mushrooms. Give me any mushrooms. And two random mushrooms. I'm gonna yield. Oh, I got one I needed, thank god. Oh, oh, and that finished that task. Which means I can now... Hello? There we go. It's per cycle. How do I re-roll it? Um, I'm not too worried about this anymore now that I've got that. Let me bring these mushrooms back to not to cast or that's the wrong person. Matsutake broth. No, it he seems impressed. Another cycle? Yep. Three? Three. Okay. I can't hack you, can I? And I reroll with left shift. I'm actually gonna push left shift now. That's the same exact. <laughs> I hate it here. Alright. Sure. I'm hissing. Buy money for cats. Buy food for cats, I should say. And now I'm flickering again. Great. But I have what I need. So let me go buy a stabilizer first. And apply it. There we go. Honor's Fairy. There we go. Last Ripper Worm. Come on. Boom. A thread from this facility cuts through the cloud like a hairline crack of light. That's it. The final layer of security broken. 
somewhere buried deep in the depths of the station. Hang as a controller. He's slicing into the camera control circuits and piping out the result. The thread flickers and unravels into an image. A scene. Two figures in a room. One set. The other pacing. The pacing figure resolves into Harden. The unmistakable superior posture the shock of gray hair. The second figure's features don't seem to resolve. They are vague, unformed. Problem with the data, perhaps. You look closer. Then you see it. The figure is a proxy. Perhaps you should have expected it from Conway. A corporation whose very existence is owed to automation. The machine is a proxy. Or the, pi the proxy is a machine. Designed to be piloted by remote connections. Someone else speaking to the system is puppeteering it with their own body. Speaking so it may speak. The proxy sits impassively. The Conway executive that piloting it them does. Some sa distant safety of some ship or orbital company, perhaps. We can move forward, there is no doubt, Harden is saying. The reclamation teams are almost ready, and after that I will make the declaration. Nothing has to change. Foxy leans forward, its movement stilted, uneven as if its body was being refracted through water. Things must change, Harden. We need further assurances. I have been informed of a breach in one of the closed networks on the low end. You have been careless. Harden waves the accusation away. We have been stretched. Our breach was detected, yes, but no data of value was lost. What is concerned, Hardin? A drop in our value would be most unwelcome at this time. Proxy leans back at po its posture dominant. The reclamation of... Uh, the, I don't remember this guy's name again. The eye is contested. Could be drawn into a compromising legal position. AE1. Hardin approaches the proxy. There will be no contest. Not from Solheim, who cannot muster a defense. Not from Haven Age, who will fall into line below me. He crouches in front of the seated figure, eye to eye. People of this station? Refugees, gangs, spacers. Either opportunists or degenerates. Haven Age is no longer strong, no longer united. No one here believes in- oh yeah, his name's Andre Erlen. No one here believes in Erlen's vision, nor had his strength to reenact it. That across from him at the negotiating table, he was forceful, eager. Weakened by his ideological convictions, perhaps, but a great man nonetheless. This place no longer deserves to bear his name. The eye is crippled, it cannot survive. It is a ruin filled with squatters and outlaws. It will be lucky if it still spins in a hundred cycles, Harden stands. You will move forward with the reclamation, because otherwise you will lose your advantage in the system. Without your advantage, you will lose claims on the remaining palladium. Without the palladium, your factories will go dark. He pauses. Do we need to continue? One moment, the response can form. Comes the response form the proxy? And his head drops to its chest. Arn steps back and paces once more, awaiting the discussion taking place in the elsewhere in the system. Watch Harden as he paces, as he considers his future. What goes on within a mind like that? The mind of a man who would burn all those around him for a path to some imagined golden end. The proxy lifts its head. We are happy to proceed. We will legally claim the station known as, formerly known as Solheim AE-1 is salvaged within six cycles. Even ages to assist with the transportation of the illegal residents to Conway housing and labor facilities. The proxy judges to its feet. Conway will also reclaim 70% of the raw output for the reclamation process after losses have been accounted for. Harden nods. I accept. Proxy reaches out to shake his hand like a marionette in the recording loops. You watch it play out a second time, gripped by a horrified fascination. There was a bluntness to the conversation, to its blatant disregard for humans as anything other than objects. Things to be moved, to be used, to be fed into assist structures, crushed and losses accounted for in the cells of tables, the margins of ledgers. You realize now you are no different than anyone else on his station in the eyes of people in a room like that. And those like them. Each body here can be recast as a piece of property, a tool, an expense, an acceptable loss. In one moment they can be named a citizen. Celebrated, protected, and in another very idea of citizenship can be used against them. That is what it means to live in a proximity to a system like that. No longer, not while the ice prints. You gather a recording, pack it into a polygon of purest light. You drift down into the surface dock like a falling leaf and find the relay. It only takes a second to place that polygon of data, that recording, into the relay system thing prepared. And as you watch, it bursts out, a web of threads heading out into the black, to every network device on the eye. 
Let them see what power makes of a man. Hey. Get fucked. What do I do next with that? Wait for Fang to return. If he can, I guess. Oh, that's concerning. Um, what else needs to be done over here? I haven't checked that out yet, but I'm holding off for a bit. I think I'm going to sunbathe. There we go. Now with this remaining energy, can I hack? Yeah, Haven Age at all? No. Very sad. Let me go do a job then. Um, junior attacker, welder's mate. I mean, either way, I get good stuff out of it. There we go. Is there a timer over here for Fang to return? Fang's Bay. Two cycles. That's concerning. Ah. <sighs> I think with that, I'm actually going to leave it here. So, thank you for watching, folks. Uh, I know it's shorter than the previous stream. That's okay. Gives me some time to prepare for what could possibly be finale. Um, I want to make sure I have enough energy and voice to perform my best. Entertain enough, at the very least. So, without further ado, I will see you all next time. Hasta luego.